Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Shelly Geigel with JS Hobbies and Crafts and I have a really fun beginner's mini album here for you. And this is a seven inch by nine inch and I believe we're about two and a half or two and three quarters, uh, somewhere in there on the spine. And this is made with the Apricot Honey Paper Collection by Prima. This is a really fun, easy to make album. I did not include die cut, trim, or any fancy punching trims. And I hope that you enjoy this. Christmas is right around the corner, everyone. And uh, if you're making these to sell, if you're making them as gifts, this is a great tutorial because it takes less time than some of my other ones. So let's get started on taking a look at what we're making today. All right, so over here, what we have is a large fold fold out and back here I stash some smaller picture mats or you can use them as tags. This opens up and up here you have a little place you can write a note. Awesome place to put a photograph. Same down here and we're just going to pull that right on down and you can place photo down here. Now this is also another fold out, but, but it, what it has is a little tuck area right back behind here and a generous size pocket so you can get your 4x6's or whatever sizes that you'd like to get in there. This will open up for you. Awesome place just to plant some photos in here and another pocket. And this pocket has a tuck area as well back here. But it also has a magnetic little folder. You can place photos in there. And another large size pocket, 4x6 or whatever size that you would prefer to do. And that's just all folds back up. And these will tuck back in there. Over here we have a double pocket. And we have a little uh, tuck area back here as well. And this is a picture mat. You can place your photo or you can just journal or just leave it alone. And the first pocket, here are some smaller size photo mats. And you can get larger ones in here. And back here is our large back, back one, four by six, whatever it is you'd like. And what you can also do is uh, place your four by sixes up here and stack them in. So it's completely up to you how you want to uh, use these pockets. Right here. Now this idea I got from Jessica Bennett who works down at JS Hobbies and Crafts. We did a project share. She's also my daughter-in-law. This is all magnetic holding everything in as you can see. So this is just pops right off and inside here wonderful place to put some picture mats, landscape or upright and you can even get some smaller ones in here. We have another magnetic folder that comes right off. Same thing. Now here we have some tuck areas back here and I just tucked right back behind this a smaller photo mat and this can also be a tag or whatever it is that you'd like. This is magnetic and it pops up. More photos. This is a tuck area back here. Same thing. And that pops up. And these just kind of all magnetically find the magnet there and they pop right back on. Over here we left alone so you can place your photos. This is a double side pocket and uh, back here I have 4x6, you can get a 5x7 in that and some photo mats. Up here I have several things in this pocket. Some more picture mats, some tags, All just goes right back in real nice and easy there. Okay, over here is kind of the same idea. We do have that large back side pocket, but up here I created a tuck. You can put some photo mats back there. 
and this is magnetic and it opens up for more photos. And here is that large pocket. Okay, last page is here. This is a fold out. And we have a tuck area, place to journal. And I just kind of staggered a couple of the picture mats back there. Over here, great place to place some photos. We open that up, another place to place your photos, and we have a waterfall over here. And underneath here, you can plant a photo. Back here is our back pocket, our final page. This is a tuck area. And several four by six picture mats I have back here. And you can get five by seven in there if you'd like. So that is our quick, easy mini album that we will be making today. Let's move into the materials list. Materials list. So I'm going to go through the materials list rather quickly so we can get started. But what I'm using is the Prima Apricot Honey 12 by 12 size paper collection and it is gorgeous. For this album, I'm going to be using a 65 pound 8.5 by 11 black cat cardstock and it, the name is Doris or Coordinations. Tyvek. Now, Tyvek is what's going to keep our album from ever splitting the covers and from the spine. And all you're going to need is a couple strips of these. Um, so one envelope will last you a long time. Two pieces of 12 by 12 medium weight chipboard. And we'll be cutting that down to size. On the cover of my album, I am using my own brand, Designs by Shelly DBS, and this is the goldish frame. Now, this one's called Golden Promises. Uh, however, if we're out of stock for whatever reasons, just grab a gold frame and it will work just fine. You'll want two packs of magnets, and I'm using the basic gray, and they're the larger ones. They come uh, about 12 per package. Bling on a roll, I will be using that, and bling on the roll is very inexpensive. You get 10 yards of it, and it's just the single strand. Lace. Now, I'm going to be using a variety, but I am going to be using this lace, which is called the Elegant Diamond, and it's a two and a half inch, and this is what you'll see on the spine of the album. I'm also going to be using the Elegant Drop, and this is a two inch lace. I'm going to be using, I believe this is called the Clooney Scallop Lace and it's approximately, I think, 13 sixteenths inch in width. And then we also just got this in and I wanted to use this. This is the dotted flower and it's uh, about one and three eighths. You'll want to grab from your stash some ribbon and this is one eighth inch wide. It's white ribbon. You can get this anywhere. Flowers. Now, flowers that I'm going to be using, and this is called the Roses uh, Coral Dreams, and they're kind of a fabric-y style rose, and uh, they're really pretty, and I thought this would look really nice on the cover of our album. Now, for leaves, what I'm doing, and if you have some other source of leaves, that's great. You can die cut your own. But I'm using a fabric leaf, and these are like a poinsettia. So what I figured I'd do is just cut off the edges of the pointiness, and then it looks rather beautiful with that flower. And that's the bottom half after snipping. But I think that looks really pretty together. Okay, we are just about done here. All we need now is to go over the glue. I am going to be using glue in this. This is the Art Glitter Dries Clear Adhesive. There's no glitter in it. And if you get this, you'll definitely want to make sure you get that metal tip. I'm going to be alternating in between the quarter inch score tape and the three eighths inch score tape. Other things that you're going to want handy, you're definitely going to need your scoring board and your scoring tool. You'll need a cutter, scissors, craft knife, 
and I like to use hot glue for tacking my flowers for quick, ta quick tacking. Let's begin. Let's go over some of our pre-cuts on our chipboard. So what we did was we cut two pieces of chipboard that were 7 by 9 inch and we labeled these cover. And we also cut a 2 and a quarter by 9 inch spine at a chipboard. Now this is an easy no wrap style album so we will not be wrapping it. We're actually going to be using the black border off of our chipboard. Now one thing is if you cut and you see that you have some shreds there. Here's a quick little tip is grab a buffer style file and what you can do is just go like this and you can get those off the sides and it smooths it up a little bit. Okay, if you by chance don't like the look, you can always ink around the edges with black too. We also cut two pieces of Tyvek. And our Tyvek was cut at one and a quarter inch by eight inch. And we needed two of these. So we're going to begin here. I'm going to set my covers and my spines off to the side. And let's grab our three eighths inch score tape. And all we're going to do with this is we're going to line each side of both pieces. So whatever we do here, we're going to do on the other one. And then we're going to lay one right in the middle. I like to start with the edges to make sure I get right up next to the edge. Now, if you get a little overhang, we're going to be covering this. But um, you do want to make sure that down here, if you flip it over and you can see any of your score tape peeking over, you, you're definitely going to want to clip that off. So let's get both of these pieces ready to go. Once you have your score tape down, or at any time during this tutorial you lay score tape or the glue, you have to use your tool and burnish it down. Make sure you get all that air out from underneath. Uh, what happens is if you do not do that, over time, air gets trapped underneath this, your chipboard, or your cardstock, and even with your glues in between. So when that happens, it dries it out and it begins to spread. So that's why you burnish it down always. And that way you, you get the most of that air out from underneath. Uh, another quick tip, score tape. Um, score tape it's almost impossible to keep our fingers out of it however what you'll want to do is wash your hands uh, clean of any lotions or oils off your skin so that when you do touch it it minimizes the risk of losing too much potency to the adhesive this is a strong adhesive I use it all the time it works great for me so um, that's just a real quick tip let's begin laying our Tyvek so what you're going to want to do, this is a no wrap style, so that means we can butt these up next to each other. So we're going to start with right here. And as you can see, I make sure that I am completely up against. I am flush top and bottom. And now what we're going to do is remove that score tape backing. And that's where the craft knife for me comes in very handy. And then we're going to lay our piece. Now when we lay our piece, we're going to center this top and bottom so that there is even amount of leftover chipboard showing. So here is where my joint is going to be. And I'm going to lay this, trying to get this as even as I can, and I'm just going to lay it right on over that. If you get any wrinkles, don't worry, this does... Uh, get covered up, but definitely burnish that down really good. All right, we're going to stick this one up against. Make sure they are flush, to flush up against. If you have any shards of the side of your chipboard, get rid of it and push it all the way up against. Let's remove the score tape and we're going to match it up to the same over here and we're going to lay it down just like we did over here. So let's do that. I got mine down. Now it doesn't look real pretty, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next step. We cut a four inch by eight and a half inch piece of cardstock and we labeled that spine cover. 
and this is just going to lay right on over and we're going to center that top to bottom. Now here is the biggest thing, I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, the biggest thing that I see in when people have some liftage is they don't completely cover their piece. So what I like to do to make sure all edges are down is I'm going to use my 3 8 and I'm going to line first around my piece like a picture frame. So let's start there. So this is what you should have. Now we'll burnish this down when we are completely done. But what we're going to do now is just lay strips of score tape next to each other all the way across. Now I have a little bit of a space here, so I'm going to use my quarter inch and lay it right on in there. And it's going to overlap my 3 8 but that's okay. So once you have this all down, definitely take the time and burnish down that score tape to get out all the air. Once you've done that, flip it over. If you can see any of your score tape peeking over the edge, you definitely want to clip it because that will uh, possibly show, especially the top and the bottom. Okay, let's grab our album. So what this is going to do is we're going to be centering this top and bottom. It should leave you approximately about a quarter inch here and a quarter inch up here of chipboard showing. That's our headroom and our bottom. And when we lay this, we're going to lay it down evenly. As you can see, and maybe I'm not sure if you can or not, but right here is where my spine meets my cover, here and here. I have overhang evenly on each side. So let's remove the score tape and we are going to place this together. I've got the adhesive off and once again, I am looking for about a quarter inch up from the bottom and even overhang and keeping this straight. And we'll place it. And now we burnish really good. So now this is what you should have. You can bring in your sides now and notice you should not get any bubbling up. If you did, you didn't burnish down good enough. Uh, that's why I don't use glue because it will do that. So now what you have is this is the inside of our album and it looks nice. Now don't worry about this. This will get covered with our lace. Let's get our inner pages in. We cut three pieces that were seven and one sixteenth by eight and a half inches. And what we did was we laid it down so we were seven and one sixteenth inch across. We scored each at six and a half. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold on all of our score lines and we're going to use our tool to crease it on each one of these. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to flip these over so that the peak is up and we're going to grab our quarter inch score tape for this because two of these will work perfect. So I'm going to zoom in, zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So right here you have a peak. Do not get your score tape on the peak. We're going to go just to the right side of it with our quarter inch and we will go right to the edge. It's kind of hard to see with this in the way, I think. And then we're going to go right to the edge. And if yours overlaps a little bit, that's fine. Just make sure that no score tape is peeking over the edge. If you get any score tape that goes over the edge, you'll definitely want to clip that. So we're going to burnish this down really good. And then we're going to flip this over. If you can see any score tape, peeking over even a little bit, you're going to clip that. Okay, let's lay our score tape on each one of these. I have the score tape on each one of my pages here. And let's grab our book back. Now this is probably the easiest hinging system around. Now you see where your crease is, right? If you were to pull this up. When I remove the score tape off this, I am going to bring that right up against that and I'm going to line it up 
with our spine cover. So it makes it real easy and, and, and you can keep these in line when we place them. So we're going to be placing these together, definitely. And get the score tape backing off. So I'll just pull up my side here and I'm going to line it up with the bottom like I said, put it in that groove. And once I have it in place, I'll just use my finger here. Now what we do is we burnish that down. And your first page is in. That's how simple it is. Let's grab our next one. So this is real simple. All you're going to do is butt this right up next to this one. And you're going to make sure that you're even with your spine cover. And you're going to place it and then we'll burnish it down. That's how easy this is. Okay, we have one more to go. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to butt that right up next to it. So now your pages should be in nicely. Just like that. Perfect. So our pages are in, and if you get a little bit off or crooked, that's okay. The chances that you uh, are even going to see that uh, after you get your paper in and everything is pretty uh, slim. So we have that in. Let's just close this up. Now what I want you to do, so you don't get turned around, is flip your book over and just put the back. Okay? Front. And this is going to be our page one. This is inside the chipboard so that we know that we're going the right way. Okay, let's start cutting our decorative paper and decorate the outside. In your paper pack, you will find two of these identical prints. And there'll be some left over for the pages inside. Anyway, on the back side, they look like this. The first thing that we want to do is put this on our paper cutter and trim off this trim piece. The trim piece, because it has some stuff on it, it has some um, on one side, it has this, the back side, it has this. Let's just keep this just in case we need this in the tutorial. And um, one thing you're going to want to do is when you were cutting your black cardstock for the pre cuts, any black cardstock that you have left over, just stick in a, in a separate pile, a scrap pile. We're going to call that our reserves because we're reserving to possibly use it in this tutorial. We're going to make a second pile with our decorative paper. Okay, so we're going to just double these up. And the way I try to do um, when telling you how to cut this so that you get the same results is I always try to start from the left side and tell you to measure over this way. Now I may turn the paper sideways, but still it's a consistency so you know what to expect. So you'll want to check out the way I'm um, holding my papers. So we're just looking at it normally like this. We are going to turn it sideways measure over 8 and 7 eighths inch and cut on both of these. Your leftover pieces right here, we're just going to stick in our reserves for now and we're going to double these up. Now I'm going to turn this upside down. My, my writing is upside down. I'm going to measure over 6 and 7 eighths inch and cut. This is what you should have. The smaller of the smaller side over here. This is what's going in our reserves. So now we have two pieces and if you were to place one down just to take a look and center it, you'll have a black border all the way around that will look nice. And that's what we're going to do with the front and the back. So I'm going to move the album over and I'm going to flip these over and I'm going to use my quarter inch and the first thing I'm going to do is hit the sides and I'm going to go all the way around like a picture frame to ensure that I get uh, the, the edges really good so that there's no chance that it's going to catch on something and tear. So let's start by doing that on each one of these. So I did that on both of these and I'm going to run one down the middle and I'm going to space out two 
on each side on both of these. What you'll want to do is we're going to burnish this all down, but we also want to check to make sure we don't have any overhang of score tape on these. Um, it's very important because if you have any overhang of score tape, it's an adhesive. So dirt and everything's going to stick right to that adhesive. And it doesn't look very nice when we um, have this on our album having score tape sticking out the side. So let's start with the front. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this. I'm just going to hold all my pages back and I'm going to put this down. I can still see where my spine meets my front. So I'm definitely going to make sure that this is, when I place this, that it is centered. So remove the score tape backing off your piece. Make sure you're going the right way with the writing. And now we're going to place this trying to stay even. Now it's not always easy to stay even, so if you get a little bit off, it's not the end of the world. You just want to make sure that you leave a black border around here and you're definitely not on your spine. And get those edges really good. Okay, let's do the same thing. Remove the score tape here. Here's our back. And we're going to center that the same way we did for this. So let's do that. Perfect. So now let's find our piece for right here. In your reserves, you will find a skinny long piece like this. Uh, what we're going to do looking at it like this, our first cut is going to be to measure over eight and 7 8 inch and cut. So that's what yours should look like. Let's just turn it like this. Measure over 2 and 1 8 inch and cut. This is what you should have. And if we open this back up, it's kind of hard to see your lines if you were flush, but this is going to place and we're going to line it up with these two. And it should fit right in there nicely just like that, leaving just about a sixteenth inch of black showing before you hit the, the seams on each side. So we're going to treat this like we did that. And the first thing we're going to do is go around the outside like a picture frame with our score tape. And I'm using quarter inch. I have mine down. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to place one down the center and one on either side. Make sure that this stays down, especially when we get that lace uh, coming over the side there. So let's burnish this and then we'll remove our score tape backing and we'll place this together. I have the score tape backing off mine and remember do not get this over onto where your seam is where the spine meets the chipboard uh, covers. So we're just going to place that right in there as best we can evenly and we'll place it and burnish that down, especially the edges and the corners. Now, doesn't that look nice? I think that looks very nice. Let's get some lace out and what I'm going to be using is this. This is the Elegant Diamond. It's two and a half inch and it's going to go here and wrap over onto my spine. So I'm going to cut a piece that will fit top and bottom, about nine inches or so, but I just place mine down and, and cut, and then I can trim it up if needed. So you'll want to cut two of these. Okay, so I have mine, and I think this uh, lace is just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to glue about an inch over onto the cover and then I'm going to wrap it around onto here. So this, you just got to make sure if it's easier to start by centering this in the middle of the spine because remember we have another piece and it's just going to butt right on up next to it like this. So let's start there actually. So one thing you need to know is I'm flattening this out but when I go to glue 
on this over onto the cover, we have to stand it up and put it in its form. Because it, if you do it like this, both sides, you're not going to be able to shut your album. So for me on this, I'm going to take off my metal tip because lace tends to um, absorb a lot. So I'm not going to really get it into the crease at all of where my spine meets. So I'm just going to kind of go around. I'll work with both pieces here. I like to just put some in and then I can sop off anything um, that is not supposed to be there. That bleeds through there. So just the spine for now, guys. Okay, so be patient with your glue uh, for the material because material does like to uh, uh, absorb a lot of glue. So here's this now. And all I'm going to do is lay this down so I can at least close my album. And now what I'm going to do is make sure I get over here. And I'm going to pull it over, wipe up any glue. So I'm going to give this, this has got to dry before I can flip it over, but we'll be doing the same thing with the back side. So I'm going to give this about 10 minutes all to dry. Once your glue dries on the front, you will then pull over the back and give it some time to dry as well. Our lace should all now be dry after a 10 minute break. I'm going to set my album off to the side. In your paper pack, you will find this print. On the back side, it looks like this. Grab your DBS frame, Designs by Shelley frame, and what we're going to do is place it down right in there. So you'll be able to see um, some of your gray frame and whatnot. And we're not going to worry too much about um, this part. We're going to have some leaves over here, but we're going to be able to still see a little bit of the gray in the frame. So what I want you to do is grab your pencil, okay? And uh, what we're going to do, I think the easiest thing is don't worry about cutting into a lot of this stuff down here because we have plenty. But I'm going to take this and put it in between these little, to kind of like a guide for me. Just going around so that I can cut it. So now you can kind of draw and see what you're, you're needing here. I think you can see my pencil. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to come in and what I want us to do is try to leave as much as we can attached to this. Uh, it's easier for us to find. So if we can just come right on in and just kind of use our circle as a guide and cut around it in one swipe here with our scissors, that would be great. And we will trim this up too a little. But at least we have a, a guideline to uh, get that at least. So I'm going to put this in our reserves and I'm going to grab the front. Make sure you have the front and you are not upside down. But this is going to place here. I'm going to find something to prop up my album a bit. The side of this might work and you can see better. Okay, so if we were to glue that down and place our frame over it, it's going to look really good. So just kind of position that where you would like it. And we're going to apply glue and glue this down. And I need my tip back on here. Definitely want my tip, otherwise I'll put too much glue and waste it. You don't need a whole lot of glue for paper, that's for sure, this glue anyway. And I'll just stick that somewhere in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to, while my glue is still wet, I'm just going to kind of look and see. And that looks good to me right there. So this will grab on your album pretty good and then you can reposition it as needed. And I'm gonna hold this up so I can see what I'm doing here. As long as I get it on there straight, I'll be happy. Once your frame dries, I grabbed, so far, I've got three of my fabric poinsettias and I clipped off the uh, poinsettia part. 
and I'm just going to glue these down. And I like to use hot glue because it grabs quicker. Stick that in there. Okay, I removed the bottom part of that little leaf that came with it. It's rather dark for me, so I'm going to place one here. I'll place another one right here. I've grabbed two more of my leaves and we'll just stick this one right there. Okay, my flower just got a place right there. And there we have it, and I think that looks really nice. Grab this back out of your reserves. Let's cut out and around this tag here. Okay, we have this cut. Now I cut mine down quite a bit. Uh, there is no, none of the scallop edges left. And in my reserves, I am going to look for a piece of black cardstock, and I'm going to cut it down so that if I placed it behind, there is about a 16th inch of black showing like this. So once you have that cut, don't glue them together yet. What we're going to do, and I've got glue all over me, is I'm going to take just a corner off the top. Now make sure this corner doesn't get away from you because you're going to need that to flip over to where you see the back side, which should be like a cream color. Now this will give you the pattern to make sure that they're even like so. And that's a little trick. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply glue to this and you'll want to also have your ribbon handy and we're going to glue these together. So I have that. Now it's easy to clip to give that same border up here. Let's open up our album and I'm just going to split it like this. Make sure you don't crinkle your pages. And I oh, hope I need to put a little more glue right there. That's a sure tail sign there that I need to put a little more glue down um, on the fabric or it didn't get down good enough. Anyway, this is going to place here. And you can use your glue or your hot glue. And for quick tacking purposes, I'm just going to add some hot glue to the top here. And I'm going to place this. Let's make a bow with our ribbon. I made a small bow and once again I'm going to use my hot glue. Now be very careful you don't mess up your white uh, satin bow or whatever you're using with hot glue. So now it looks like this, my spine. And I think that looks really good. Now one thing I can do is trim up my tails a little bit more and um, or leave them long. Okay, our front, spine, and back are done. We are moving on to page one, which is the inside cover of our album. Let's go over our pre-cuts for page one. We cut a six by eight inch piece of cardstock. We labeled that fold out. We laid this on our scoring board. And what we did was we scored it, and we're six inches across, we scored at five and three-eighths and five and a half. We cut two pieces that were four by six and a half, and we called those FO pockets. There's no scoring on these. Next, what we did was we cut two pieces that were five and a half by six inch. One we labeled top flip, one we labeled bottom flip. And what we did on these is we laid these where we were five and a half inches across. We scored at a half inch, and then we also scored at 11 sixteenths. So you'd have to move that over a bit and get that. And we did that on both of these. So before we get started cutting into um, 
or getting our pages for like page one, our decorative paper, let's do all of our pre-cutting of our base decorative pages. So all we have to do is grab at them as we go through each page. I'm going to have you grab two sh one sheet of this out of your paper pack. And on the back, it looks like this. In your paper pack, I would like you to grab one of these prints. And on the back, it looks like this. In your paper pack, grab one of these. On the back, it looks like this. And in your paper pack, you will find this print. And on the back, it looks like this. And that's what we want. So to start with all of these, what we're going to do is we're going to trim off those trim pieces. I have all the trim cut off the top. Let's just double these two up to start and we're going to turn it sideways. Measure over 8 inches and cut. This is what you should have. So now looking at it like this, measure over 6 inches and cut. This is what you should have. We're just going to take these two and stick them off to the side. Don't put them in your reserves. Now these we're going to stick off to the side for right now. Let's get to these. So I am just looking at it like this. We'll double these up. We're going to turn them sideways and do the same thing. We're going to measure over 8 inches and cut this way. Then we'll measure over 6 inches. So let's do that. Alrighty. So we have all of these. So let's just kind of put these in the order of which we would like to do. So we're going to use this for page one. We'll set that aside. This is page two. Underneath that you will have these two prints. There's page three and four, five and six, and then seven and eight. So we'll just keep these off to the side where we can grab it. Here is our page one. And how we look at this is just like reading a book. Page one, page two, page three, four, and so on. And the very last page would be the back chipboard. Grab your page one, fold out six by eight. And what we're going to do is just fold on those score lines and use your tool to help burnish that down. And all we're going to do with this is flip it over. In your paper pack, you will locate this print. On the back, it is this one. So let's first just take off that trim piece. I have the trim off mine. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we are going to turn our sheet sideways. Let's measure over seven and seven eighths inch and cut. Put this in our reserves for now. Looking at it like this, measure over five and one eighth inch and cut. Measure over again, five and one eighth inch and cut. I have both of mine here, and one of them I'm going to stick off to the side. Let's just stick this one off to the side right now. We'll flip it over because we're going to use it for the other side of this. Now I have this over and my flap is off to the right. But I'd like to show you something here, and I'm going to bring it up. Whenever we place papers, and we're not going to place this yet, we have a pocket to put on here, but the idea is to, when you're, you're going to center that in there to give yourself a little bit of black border, top and bottom, like so. You will have two score lines over here. You have the inside and the outside. Now you do not want to place this right up against that inside. You want to leave the same amount of spacing from that score line to your paper as you have over here. So that is one of the biggest things so that you do not mess up your fold out. So I'm just stick this off to the side. And what we're gonna grab now is one of our four by six and a half inch FO pockets. And let's grab a quarter inch score tape and we're going to lay a piece down at the bottom of this panel we cut. 
and we are going to burnish really good so that our pocket doesn't separate. We're going to remove this. This piece here I like to give a little bend, but what we're going to do is when we bring this down to the bottom of our page, we're going to leave even amount of hangover because that's what we use to tuck back behind our page. So what I like to do is just bring it right down to the bottom. I start in the middle with my fingers and press and go out. And sometimes what that does is give you just a little bit more room in your pocket. Next, we're going to turn it over. Make sure that this is flat. And you're going to wrap these flaps around the back. We'll grab our glue and we will tack that down using our tool to help us. Over here is the same thing. We're just going to wrap that in. Make sure I'm even there. And apply some glue to that flap and get that down. Okay, so now you have a pocket. Let's get some paper for that. What I would like is for you to get in your reserves and get this piece. This should be a good fit here for us. And all we're going to do is what we call measure to fit. So I'm placing it over my pocket. I'm going to leave a little bit of my black showing. I'm going to take my pencil and then we're just going to make a pencil mark. Now we know where we need to cut. So let's do that. Verify your cut is accurate. I always say that just in case of a miscut. And place it down and you'll leave a little bit of a black rim. We're going to glue that down and then we're going to burnish it. Once you have that down, we're now going to apply glue to this. And remember, your flap should be up off to the right because this is our inside. And we are going to center that, steering clear of that inner score line, giving yourself enough room. And we're going to glue that down and then we're going to burnish it down. Cut a piece of your lace and we're going to glue it down. And we will just position that straight across without getting into our uh, hinging over there. So you should have something like this. I am in this. This is where we cut out for the frame on the front. And all I'm going to do is cut out and around this. If you have a paper cutter that will cut it for you, that'd be great. I'm going to stick this on so I can get a straight cut. I have mine. Grab some uh, black cardstock from your scratch or uh, your reserves scrap pile. And all we're going to do is lay this down, giving about a sixteenth of an inch of black border. And now we're going to cut out and around, leaving that same little border. So it's framed. This is what mine looks like. We're going to apply some glue to this. And we're just going to place this right up here. I think I got that straight. Burnish that down. In your paper pack, you should have another one of these. And on the back, it looks like this. Let's take off that trim piece. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut out and around each one of these pieces so we have it handy. Before you get started with hand cutting, what I'm going to do so that I have straight edges is I'm just going to run my paper cutter and start slicing these. Now when it comes to here, sometimes these are an uneven edge. I'm just going to square it up so that it is even. Cut a piece of black cardstock. Don't worry about my score line here. I was just looking at something. Uh, 3 and 15 sixteenths by 5 and a quarter. What I'd like you to do is grab this little card that we just cut and this will make it easy. So the first thing you're going to want to do is just fold this in half instead of scoring. It'll make it easier and then you can burnish. So we have a little folder here. This I want you to place and center in it. Now when you do that, this is where we're going to have some trimming because some people did not cut to 
uh, make a straight edge. Some people went out and around. So what you're wanting to do is just leaving a 16th inch of black showing as a frame around there. Then what you're going to do is cut any excess off. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I just trimmed off that little bit of excess. And again, the opening is right here. And I'm going to apply my glue. And I'm going to glue that down. Whoops, there goes my dogs. Right on schedule for a tutorial. <laughs> and we'll burnish that down and clean up any glue that might seep out. So let's open this up. And in your reserves, you will find this. We're just going to measure to fit. So I'm just going to place that here and I'm going to be mindful of that well where we folded our score there. And I'm going to leave a border over here, 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 and I'm going to measure to fit. So my first cut is always going to be this way. And then I will cut this way. And then what you will do is once you do that, then you have the size that you need to cut over here for this side. So let's do that. So I have both of mine cut that will fit here. We're going to grab, get into our magnets. I have a magnet here and I'm going to place this down over here. Make sure that that's your front. Okay, I'm going to close that and let it find the mate. So now I know where this one goes. And I'm going to take the adhesive off the backing and let it find it itself. So carefully open this up. It will get thicker as soon as we place our papers in. So apply glue now and glue these down. Let's close that up. Now I want to make it so that we can tuck or slide something back behind. But sometimes when you do that, it will catch on the magnet. So what I like to do is just cut a little square out of my scrap cardstock and apply glue and glue it right on over, making sure I get the edges so when I use my tool to get around it makes for a smooth sliding back behind. I've got mine down so what I want to do is when I apply glue I'm only going to apply it to oh my gosh sorry uh, apply glue back behind here and under here so I'm just going to go here and here so we can still slide things in. Now up here where there's lace I'm going to put a little bit more glue and I'm just going to put that off at an angle making sure that I don't go over the edge and then I'm going to open it up and burnish this and I'm going to let that dry before opening it up again. So let's flip this over and what I want you to do your flap is over here you have an outside and an inside score line. On the inside, I want you to pinch it so all we're looking at is what needs to be covered with paper. We set this off to the side and we're going to do the same exact thing that we just did on the inside. Grab your four by six and a half inch and we're going to lay our quarter inch score tape at the bottom. Burnish that down really good and we're going to create a pocket. Make sure you're laying flat there, your paper. We're going to give that a bend and I'm going to go separate them dogs. They're playing too rough. And when we bring it down, leave your overhang. Gosh, she sounds like a spaz. Okay, fingers in the middle and push out. Now we flip it over and we burnish and tack down our flaps. And there is our pocket. I'll be right back. All right, let's see here. So we did this, we did that. Let's get our paper. In your reserves, you will find this. And it's about four inches by 12 inches right now. And all we're gonna do is measure to fit. So we're gonna lay that down. And we will mark it over here, what we need and down here. Our first cut is this way, then that way, and then we're going to glue that down. 
I have mine down, let's grab our fold out. Now remember our flap is off to the left side and we're going to tuck that back behind so all we see is what we're working with. And I think I already said that earlier, but just to make sure, we're gonna apply glue to this and we're gonna mount that centering it top, bottom, and the sides. And then we'll burnish it down. We're gonna be adding some lace and all that, but first let's get this attached. So let's grab our base decorative piece. Here's our flap. You have an inside score line and an outside. On that outside one, we're going to pinch like this. We're going to hook that on the front where our flap goes to the back. So just make sure you are straight pushed all the way over, pinch and hold it. And I like to twist my hand around like this and I keep my hand down here so it doesn't slide. If you feel your paper slide, realign it and we're just gonna add some glue to this flap. Now be very careful about how much glue you get close down in, down in here because what happens is glue can spread and squirt out. So let's get this down and then we're going to push back against that other score line. So now when we feel it's flat, let's open it up. If you see any glue in here, you got to get it out that might have squirted out from that hinge being put on. Otherwise you'll glue your page shut. Okay, I am going to get into some lace here. I'm gonna use the same as what I used on the inside. And I'm gonna cut a piece that will fit side to side and I'm going to glue that down. And I think that's pretty straight there. I have this card, it says Dreamer. Cut a piece of cardstock that will mount back behind and give you a nice black border. And we'll glue those together. This is not a folder. Once you have that glued together, what we're gonna do is put glue on the underside here and over, kinda like what we did with our folder. And this creates a tuck. Now when you place this, make sure that this does not go over the edge because it will interfere with this trying to open up. So just at an angle will look good. And now you can still tuck things back behind there. Okay, let's set this off to the side and we will grab our five and a half by six inch top flap and we're going to fold on those score lines and make sure that that is straight. Okay, let's find our paper. In your reserves, you should find a piece like this. It's four inches by about six and three quarters inch. We're going to measure over five and seven eighths inch and cut. Also in your reserves, you will find a long skinny piece like this. On the back, it is the bricks. So what we're first going to do with this is looking at it like this, measure over five and seven eighths inch and cut. Now grab your scoring board or, or your paper cutter, something with a flat edge here. And what we're gonna do is use our quarter inch score tape and we will be cutting this down. So just line this really quick and then we can get it on the right way. So what we're gonna do is overlap this one onto that one, and the straight edge here is what's gonna help keep us straight. And then we're gonna cut this down. So that's a little helpful hint when you need to attach two things to make use of your paper. Okay, now looking at your sheet like this, we're going to measure over four and five eighths inch and cut. So we're going to shape top flip at the bottom. But the easiest way to do this is all we're gonna do is, and we're only clipping up to the corner where they meet. So when you do this, like so, 
hang on to this because this, when you flip it over to the other side, is going to give you the exact same cut. So that's something I learned a long time ago when, when working and doing this by hand. So this is what I have now. Now grab this, we're going to verify we fit okay. Your bottom score line is here. I want you to pinch and make that flap go all the way to the back so you can't see it. We still have another one of these to cut, but let's just make sure we fit side to side before going any further. And I'm a good fit. And you will have black top and bottom. And this is what it would look like. So we're not going to trim this one yet until we get a piece for the underside. In your paper pack, you will find another butterfly uh, page. Let's trim off that trim piece. Looking at your paper like this, measure over 5 and 7 eighths inch and cut. We're just going to turn it, measure over 4 and 5 eighths inch and cut. What I want you to do is just to double this up. This one's going to go on top of the butterfly print. Make sure you are the same at the top and then we will clip these. So they are the same. Just make sure you're staying the same there. Perfect. Let's set this off to the side because how this is going to play out on this side is slide right back so we're going to have this on the back side. Okay, your flip up here. Your bottom one, make sure that that's still tucked back behind. We're going to apply glue now and we're going to center that top, bottom, side to side and glue that down and burnish. This is what mine looks like so far. And I am going to make sure your flaps at the top. Now all I'm going to do is cut. Now you can put this on your paper cutter, it's probably best, but you'll want to just cut and leave yourself a little border there. All right, let's flip that up and grab a magnet. And where did I put mine? There we go. So the flap is down here now. Now I want you to move down about an inch from that edge up there and place your magnet. Now we're going to apply glue to the butterfly side and we're going to glue that down and burnish it. And be mindful of that, that, up that score line right here. Don't be on it. Once you have this done, both sides, we'll just stick this off to the side. Let's grab our bottom flip. Let's fold on those score lines really quick here. Okay, so looking at it, and I'm upside down, my flap's going to be down here. So here's a lower score line, and here's the top one. We're going to pinch on that top one so all we see is what we need to find paper for. Grab this back out of your reserves. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to be turning it sideways to make a cut. Make sure you have the right one and you are about seven and a quarter inch this way by five and seven eighths that way. We're going to measure over four and five eighths inch and cut. Do not glue it down yet because we have to place our magnet. And we will. We're just going to get this ready to go. So we'll set that one off to the side. We need to cut one for the inside. In your reserves, you will find this one. And it is 12 inches long. Measure over 4 and 5 eighths inch and cut. This is what you should have. Now measure over 5 and 7 eighths inch and cut. When you're done, you should have four and five eighths by five and seven eighths, just like our other one. We're gonna flip this down. Our flap will be up here, and we are going to apply glue, and we'll have the butterflies up, and we'll glue that down and burnish. We're going to attach this, the bottom flip first. Let's grab our base sheet here, and our flip is, our, our tab is down here. So you, the lower score line, let's pinch on that. And we are going to bring it up and over this. Just kind of scoot it up there as best you can so that you're even side to side. Once you have that, 
pinch and hold it. If you feel it move, you'll want to realign it. And we'll fold that over. Okay, once you have it there, we can push down. And that's how it looks so far. Let's grab our top flip. Your flap's up here. Your upper score line, let's pinch on that. And that is going to slide over the top. And we're going to make sure we are lined up side to side. Pushed all the way down. We're going to pinch and hold it. So I think I'm good right here. And I'm going to flip it. And we will, whoops, get this down. All right, so this is the bottom, this is the top. Let's just kind of push that back up there. We have a magnet hidden underneath here. Let's grab the mate. And we're just going to stick it right up on top there. And this is the part where you can help realign if you got on a little crooked. And we're just going to, I'm going to push this up so you can see. And I'm going to bring it over. Now do not pull it down. Let it go. Make sure you're flat there. And this is where you can align it. And then tap. And then your magnet will place. We're going to apply glue now to this side, the butterfly side. And I think we'll go like this and glue that down and burnish it down. So once you have your thing down, that should latch. Just like that. And I think that looks really nice. Grab this little card out of your little stack. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece of black cardstock to frame it. And just a little bit of black showing. And we're going to glue these together. I have mine ready to go. And what you're going to want to do is cut a piece of your lace that's going to fit from side to side. And the idea is, is we are going to trim up the sides here of our lace. But first, let's just get that down. And uh, once you've glued that down, you're going to cut a piece of your bling. So let's get this down. So right here, where that seam is, and down. Okay, now what I can do is lift this up and trim off the excess there. And we are going to glue down our bling. And I'm going to go a little heavy with my glue right on the top there because the fabric will, oops, over there too, the, grab it, the fabric will absorb a lot of the glue. In the meantime, once you get that on there straight, that's the key part, is getting it on straight as we can. While it's drying, we can put this over and that's going to help keep it down. So all we're going to do as far as this is, let's grab another one of our cards. And we will glue one to the back. Let's grab this one because it's going to show anyway on the other side and I don't want just black cardstock showing. So if it's like this when it flips up we're gonna have to be like that. So it's gonna be upside down from each other. So what's gonna happen, I'm still wet, is when this is down and we flip it up you're gonna be able to see something that says notes. Just like that. And that's kinda cool. All right, let's apply glue. And when we do this, we're just going to go from here and over in case you want to tuck something back behind. So I'm just going to go right like this and get a thicker band right there and some right in here. And I'm going to have to let this dry. And the majority of this is just going to grab right up in here, and that's perfectly fine. That looks good. And you can still see the note. And it's kind of dimensional. That's kind of cool. Okay, I am going to wait for this to dry. When this is done drying, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over. We're going to apply our score tape on the back side, 
going around like a picture frame. We're then going to put one down the middle. And for this one, let's just do uh, let's do one on either side. I think it'll be fine. And I'm going to use my quarter inch. So I'm going to leave this alone. And I'm going to set this off to the side. Page one is complete. We're going to move on to page two while this dries. Do not place page one into your book yet. Um, we're going to place page two first, so then we can line up page one after that one's in. We're on page two now, and we set our page two off to the side. Our pre-cuts were very simple. There was no scoring. We cut one that was four and a half inches by seven and three quarters, and we called it a front pocket. We cut one that was six and a half inches by seven and three quarter, and we called that a back pocket. And all we're gonna do is put these down now. And I need my quarter inch. So we're gonna line the bottom of our page with score tape and we're going to burnish that down and I'm going to remove it and the video will pick up uh, as we go along you know how to place your pockets uh, this is a little bit different because we have one that's going to be layered on top but we do pick up the pace a little bit so okay we're going to take our back pocket first and we'll give it just a little bend we'll make sure we have even overhang and we're going to bring this all the way down to the bottom of our page. Once you have it there, press in my Yeah, I think I'm even. There we go. Press in the middle down there and go out. We're just going to wrap our flaps around to the back side, like we've been doing there. And then we'll tack it down with our glue, just like we have before. Now, come with this. Make sure you burnish that really good down here. This is how it's going to play out. So don't, don't glue this down yet, because we do need to find our decorated paper first to lay some down. But this is going to be layered on top, and our, si our sides will wrap around the back. So let's find some paper. In your reserves you will find this print and this is approximately six and one eighth, somewhere in there. What we're going to want to do when we wrap, sometimes our outsides go wider, but I want to keep this consistent with this. So we're going to measure over six inches and make sure that's cut right. So I trim mine down a bit. We're gonna turn this, measure over three and a half inches and cut. We're actually going to apply glue to this side and we're gonna glue that down. And we're gonna leave just a little bit, about a sixteenth of black showing and we'll burnish that down. I have mine down, let's grab our score tape again and now we're gonna place it at the bottom of the pocket and this does not get covered up because once we place this, you're not going to see it. So it's like a total waste to uh, use up a full sheet there. So I'm going to burnish that down really good. And we are going to place this pocket. So give a good bend to your pocket and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to place this at the bottom. We'll press in the middle and we will move out. That just helps it a little bit from being so tight. Now we just wrap our flaps to the back and tack them down. And then we'll burnish those down. And this is what you should have, a double pocket. Now in your reserves you will find this piece. This is about six six and seven eighths, and I believe this is about four. Yeah, four. Measure over six inches and cut. All right, we're gonna apply glue and we're gonna bring it all the way down to the bottom and glue that down. In your reserves, you will find this piece. We are four inches by about 
seven and an eighth inch. We're just going to turn it like this. On the back it's gray. Measure over three quarters of an inch and cut. We're going to place this down and just measure to fit or just cut it by six inches. Let's apply glue now and we're going to glue that down leaving a little bit of a black border there. Cut two pieces of your lace and I'm using the same lace I used on the previous page but you don't have to. And I'm going to glue that down leaving my black, uh, just a little bit of that black showing. And I'll do the same up here. And then we're going to cut our bling to go across on each one and glue those down. Now when you cut your bling, I want you to leave a little space from the left side. Oops, the camera's shaking. And I'll tell you why later on, but just a little bit of a space in between there like I have. And if you want to do the same on the other side um, to make it even and look the same, do so. Alright, I'm going to take a look at mine and make sure I am straight and even. And I'm going to let this dry. While my bling's drying, we're going to cut a piece of cardstock to frame around this one. We will glue that together. Then we're going to add glue, go halfway up the back side here and over, and we're going to place this. Now this can definitely hang off your page. Just don't go more than uh, a half inch. I'm going to keep mine uh, at about a quarter inch. We should have another card called Happiness Looks Gorgeous on You. Once this has dried, you can just slide, th slide that right back in there. Alright, this page is complete. As soon as your bling and everything dries, we're going to flip this over. Score tape around the back side like a picture frame. And I will show you mine before placing. One down the middle and one on either side. And we are going to place this together. We're ready now to place our page two and then our one. Now on the back of both of yours they should look like this with score tape. And I've already taken the adhesive off. Now for you to be able to see my page a little better I'm just going to stick this back behind so you can see where it the edges are here. Now, when you're placing this, now I made this for beginners so that it gives you a little more wiggle room, but you're going to keep in mind where your hinge is for your page, and you're going to steer clear. And so you'll probably be able to come in a good 3 16 inch from the side would be good. Um, what you're trying to do is center this top to bottom as best you can. You should have a nice... Uh, thick border at the top and on the sides and we're just going to place this. I'm going to try and get this as even as I can without getting my head in there. And where did my scoring tool go? So it's definitely important, I can move this now, that we burnish down everything. So there is our page two, as you can see our page one. Now I'm going to remove the score tape backing but you don't look at this you're going to be looking at where your hinge is and the reason why we place this one first is so that we can line this up easier with the top and bottom because this the inside here is bigger than what our pages are so I am going to steer clear of that hinge but I'm also going to make sure that I line up top and bottom as best I can to try and match up. And also, the reason why I told you about the bling is just to leave a little space and stuff, is sometimes when you're turning, it can catch. So, um, I, I never used to leave space and stuff, and it's fine, but when you're first starting out, you just gotta be very careful. Okay. So I'm going to try to do this without getting my head in the video, which could be practically impossible. 
try to line it up and keep straight. And let's see. Now one thing about score tape, it's not so forgiving. That means if you get it on a little crooked, chances are it's going to stay on a little crooked. So now we just open this all up and we burnish. So now you know how to make some fold outs and some pockets. And um, we'll be picking up the pace whenever we get to a page that has that on there. Before we move on to page three, pull this out of your reserves. And what we're going to do is come right on over here and clip this out. I'm going to stick this on my paper cutter and I'm going to make sure that I am straight going this way and this and then I'll come down so I can still see bliss in there but I'll even it up and I'll show you mine. So after doing some trimming, it looks pretty good. We're going to apply glue and we're just going to glue that down right here. I think that looks pretty good. We are now on to page three. Page three, we set this off to the side with our other pre-cut base decorative sheets. Let's go over our pre-cuts and what we did was we cut two pieces that were four and a half inches by seven inches and we called them small folder. And what we had done is we laid these on our scoring board so we were seven inches across and we scored each one at three and a half inches in half. Okay. The next thing that we did, I'm going to get my scoring board. Probably a little bit better for those of you with the volume down. So what we did was we cut two pieces that were six and a quarter inch by eight and a half inch. We called them large folders. We laid this so we were eight and a half inches across and we scored each one at four and a quarter on each one. And you can fold and burnish on those lines right now. So let's start with, and we do want to use uh, extra magnets on this page. So we're just going to start getting our papers ready to lay. We won't glue them down until we get everything done. In your paper pack, you will find another one of these. And on the back, it is gray. Let's take off that trim piece. I have mine off. What we're going to first do is just measure over four and a quarter inches and cut. The next thing we're going to do is measure over three and a quarter inches and cut. Measure over again three and a quarter inches and cut. Measure over again three and a quarter inches and cut. We should have three pieces that are three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Let's grab this back out and this time we're going to turn it this way. We're going to measure over three and a quarter inches and cut. This is what you should have, measure over four and a quarter inches and cut. The first thing that we're gonna do is, um, our opening is gonna be at the bottom on each one of these. Look for these two. This one has the butterfly by the rose here, and this one has a butterfly over here. We're going to glue this down, we're going to center it, it'll give us a nice black border all the way around. And on this one, we will do the same on top, centering those. And we'll glue down and burnish. Alright, we're going to flip these open. And we're going to grab a couple magnets. And we're going to place it on the top half of each of these. And when we place this, we're going to come down about an inch centered, put it there. There we go. Whoops, come back here. Going on this one about an inch somewhere in there, three quarters inch, whatever. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have, looks like we need to cut possibly some more. Yep. It looks that way. Okay, we're going to apply glue to these and we will glue them down 
right like that. In your reserves, you will find this piece. It's 12 inches long, and on the back, it is this. So make sure we have everything the same here. We're going to measure over four and a quarter inch and cut. Measure over again, four and a quarter inches and cut. And all we're going to do is we're going to apply glue to this side and we're going to glue these right on down center. Okay, let's close this up. And what we're going to do is on the underneath side we're going to place some glue right down here and over. So you can still slide something back behind if you wanted to. And when you do this, you'll come maybe about 3 16ths or so from the sides and place that. And we'll open that up and burnish that down. So you should still be able to slide things back behind. And that's pretty. I'm going to be using that one. Okay, here's this one. On this one, we're going to go underneath this side and over. And we're going to do the same thing, about 3 16 inch in. Okay, let's grab those mates. We're going to turn this over. And we're going to let these find itself wherever those magnets are. There's one. Hello. There's two. So um, my sticky thing is up and I'm not going to remove the sticky. All I'm going to do is place some glue so this will stick and stay. And then when it's time to place our score tape, I can remove that. So this is holding this down now. And like I said, here's a card. And we have another card here, which is nice. It looks good. All right, now for this, grab another magnet. And what you're going to want to do is when you flip this over, bring your thumb in between these two. And your, four, and your index finger, just line them up so you know where you need to be. And you can also fill in here. The idea is to get this centered in here, in between those. Okay, come back here, little guy. So fill with your hand, find the center, and place that magnet. Okay, make sure it's down so it doesn't slide on you. And I can fill that magnet right there. Okay, let's get these covered. In your paper pack, you will find another one of these sheets. On the back, it's gray. Let's take off that trim piece. Measure over four inches and cut, and measure over again four inches and cut. When you did that, that would have given you three four inch wide pieces. On all of these, what we're going to do is measure over six inches and cut. You should have a total of six of these. And let's see here. The one with the butterfly up here. We're going to apply glue and we're going to center that to the front. Now our folder openings are over here and this one is going to go right there. For the front of this one, there's this one and we're going to apply glue to this side and it's going to glue down right like that. Grab this little card off to the side where we had all our cards and cut a piece of cardstock that will fit right behind and frame it and glue them together. Once you've done that, we'll apply glue and glue that down right to the front there. So what we're going to do next with our four panels is we're going to open these up. On these two, we are going to glue those down, centering them in there. On this one, we need to place a magnet. Now we're going to wait on gluing down this final one with the magnet over here. We're going to glue this one down, so we'll get three down. 
we're going to check and see if we need to add any additional magnets, but what I want you to do is place this one here. Okay. I want you to take this one and keep it open, but lay it kind of so it's folded like this. I want you to drop the magnet and it should be holding them all. Let's make sure. Whoops, I'm grabbing everything but. So this is going to go that way. This one's going to go like this, not too far over of course. And let it find that magnet. Not the one up here, not the one down here, but the one in the center. And I found mine. So when I close this, it's going to be a layered look and it's going to look nice as you can see. Now if I need to place another one, I will. So right now I know where it's supposed to be. I'm going to take off that backing and again I'm going to hold on to it so it doesn't shoot up where it isn't supposed to go and let it find it. Right there. Okay, we'll apply glue now and we'll glue that one in. All right, let's double check this now. Mine seems to be holding, but not well enough to my liking. So I am going to place another magnet, and the magnet's gonna go back behind this one. So we're gonna let that find its mate there. And how we're gonna determine this is put your thing down. I, I don't have the sticky side up, so I'm just going to place it down with its thing. And what I want this to do is to sit sideways. And I'm going to press. When I open it up, it's going to show me exactly where this magnet needs to go. Okay? Just like that. And once that's down, this will come over and snap better and hold. Much better. Okay, we need to make sure this stays on there. We need to place something on here, but I need to put more glue. And I'm going to remove this really quick. I have the hardest time. But don't flip it over. Just set it off to the side. We're going to get our piece for this. In your reserves, you will find this big piece on the back. It is this. Right now, looking at it like this, we are seven and three quarters by eight and three quarters. We're gonna turn it so we are eight, okay? Measure over four and cut. Measure over again, four and cut. I have both of these now. What we're going to do is I'm gonna look at them like this, put them together, measure over six inches and cut. All right, I'm going to apply glue to this and I'm going to tackle the one that has the extra magnet on it right here. And I'm just going to place this on the back side. Place that. And I'll grab this one. I'll apply glue and glue that one down. All righty, let's place this down. Much better, much better. The card, brilliant. What we're going to do is kind of like what we did on this other one. We're going to back it with some black cardstock. We'll glue them together. And I think when I glue this down, I'm only going to put glue underneath here and here so that it leaves it open for me to stick some tags if I want to on this one. So let's do that. All right, so this page is complete. We're going to flip it over. We're going to apply score tape to the outside like a picture frame. We're going to go one down the middle and one on either side. And don't forget to uh, remove these. And we'll place that in the book together. I have all the backing off the back here. So for now, I'm going to remove these so I can see what the heck I'm doing here. And I'm going to open up. Make sure you were grabbing the correct page. And it's time to place this. And I can just put that right up there out of the way. So again, you're going to want to center this. This should have almost a quarter inch uh, spacing for you. And I'm going to press that down. Now grab your scoring tool. You can find it. I seem to have lost mine. There it is. And we're just going to make sure we burnish this down really good everywhere. 
Alrighty, I'm going to stick that in there. I'm going to stick this one here. My dream will snap right in. I'm going to put that at an angle and this one will go right on top. And you can arrange them any way that you would like actually. So it's all up to you what you like. Alright, page three is complete and now we're going to move on to page four which is very simple. Page four. Okay, so for page four, we're not gonna do anything. I wanna be able to leave it so we can just place photos wherever we want. So flip this over, score tape around the outside like a picture frame, one down the middle and one on either side. Once you have the score tape on, plant this right on in your book. And again, sometimes it's easier when you place something back behind so you can see your edges, because it's hard to, for me to see. But anyway, and then you'll burnish it down. Alrighty, we are now on to page five. Let's go over the pre-cuts for page five. We had a five inch by nine and a half inch. We called it a large side pocket. And we had a three and a half by nine and a half inch piece. And this was our small side pocket. This is really quite simple. Let's grab our quarter inch score tape. And the paper we are looking for is this. And it's in what we pre-cut. We're gonna lay a piece of our score tape on the right hand side. And we're gonna grab the large side pocket first and that is our five inch and this is I'm going to turn my paper now it's a bit, it'll be easier for me so I don't get my head in the video and I'm give a little bend it's just like doing a regular pocket make sure that you have your overhang here start in the middle and press out let's flip that over we're just going to pull in our sides Add our glue and tack that down. In your reserves you will find this print on the back. This is about five and one eighth by about eight and three quarters tall. Looking at your sheet like this measure over two inches and cut. So here's our piece. We'll just turn it this way and we will measure over eight inches and cut. Grab your small side pocket, lay a piece of your score tape over on top of this one at the edge, burnish it, and we're going to mount this one on top. It's kind of like when we did our double pocket. So I'm going to turn this, give myself a little bend here for some room, and press out. And we're just going to wrap our flaps like we have been, glue them down. I have mine down. Now, in your paper pack, you will find this beautiful print on the back. It looks like this. Let's first trim off that trim piece. Once you got the trim piece off, measure over 3 and 3 eighths inch and cut. Let's turn our piece, measure over 8 inches and cut. All we have left to do for the paper part is apply glue and we'll glue that down. Cut two pieces of your lace that is eight inches long. We're going to glue it down right here and the other one we will glue down right here. Next cut a single strand of your bling and glue it down here. Now mine is still wet. I'm going to give it 10 minutes because it's on top of my my lace. But in the meantime, I'm going to get something out of my reserves. In your reserves, you will have this. And find my scissors. They ran away from me oh, right in front of my face. All I'm going to do is cut this out for now. sharpen it up a little. So once you have this, you have the option. You can either put it on your paper cutter and just cut straight on each side, or you can follow it along 
I'm going to follow it along, kind of fussy cut around this. So I have cut out and around my piece and this is pretty much just for decorations here. And I am not going to mount this to any black cardstock. I'm just going to glue it down. I think it'll look just fine without it. And there's really no rhyme or reason to why I mount things to black cardstock other than the fact that it highlights the piece. This piece does not need it. I actually like the lighter on lighter on the lace and it sticks out pretty good. So over here on the lace you're going to have to give it a little time to grab on. You may want to put a little more glue or use your hot glue to kind of do a quick tacking. Once your bling and everything dries, flip it over, place score tape around the outside like a picture frame, one in the middle, one on either side, and go ahead and plant this in your book. Right here. We are now on to page six. Page six, we set this off to the side for page six. Let's go over our pre-cuts. We cut one piece that was a five by nine and a half inch, and we called that a large side pocket, kind of like what we did on the previous page. And then we cut a four and three quarter inch by eight and a half inch folder. And what we did was we laid this on our scoring board so we were eight and a half inches across and we scored at four and a quarter. And we can go ahead and fold on that. Let's begin. Let's grab our base decorative sheet and we are going to need our large side pocket. So we're going to come over to the left side and we're going to mount this like we did on the other one. And I'm going to turn it sideways here, give a good bend, and place this. And we're going to do what we normally do. We're going to fold back our tabs, glue them down. Our opening is off to the right on this. In your reserves, you will find this print. On the back, it looks like this. Let's turn this sideways. Measure over 8 inches and cut. All right, so we are eight inches this way. Measure over five inches and cut. So this is what you should have. We're going to apply glue and we will glue that down, giving us a little bit of a black border over here. If you need to trim it down a little bit more to do that, do so. Our folder. Let's just open that right on up. Whoops. And we're going to grab a couple magnets. All right, it is open. Our opening is going to be off to the right. And what we will do is we will come in about three quarters or an inch from the side, place one. There is the mate on top. And we will close this. And carefully open it up because these are very strong. There we go. Let's find our paper first for the inside. Now in your reserves you're going to find two of these pieces. One is longer and a little wider than the other. We're going to take the bigger one and we'll look at it like this. And we're going to measure over four and a quarter inches and cut. Measure over again four and a quarter inches and cut. All right, we're just going to turn this so that it will look good in here. We'll turn this one like this and we will center that top to bottom and glue that down. I've got both of mine glued down now and I'm just going to shut it. Let's find our paper for this. In your reserves you will find this print. On the back it looks like that. So my opening's over here. Once again we're going to measure to fit. So all I'm going to do is just leave a little bit of a black border around there. And I'll make sure one's over there. So my first cut is going to be this way. And then I'll come down this way. And then we're going to glue it down. 
On this sheet in your reserve, all of our little cutouts, we're going to come up from the bottom and cut out and around this. What I'm going to do now that I have just a circle is I'm going to put this on my paper cutter and try to square it up from the sides and everything. And I'll show you what mine looks like in just a moment. So once you do that, you should have a smaller piece. Now for this, I'm not going to back it. I didn't back on the other page. I'm just going to go along the bottom here just to make a little tuck in case you'd like to tuck something there. Before we place this down, um, cut a piece of the lace that you have handy to fit top and bottom and we are going to glue that down and a row of your bling. So let's do that before we get our folder glued down. So while my bling and my stuff is drying, apply glue to the underside like this. Whoops, I'm shaking. Darn, sorry about that. Apply glue to the underside here and here so you can still tuck stuff. And we're just going to leave a little bit of an edge down there. We'll open that up and burnish it down really good. And I think that looks really good. On your cutout sheet, we're going to go after Bliss. So let's cut that out. Apply glue and glue that down. Make a small little bow. And we'll glue that down right there. So you have it like this. Once everything's dried, what you'll want to do is flip it over, score tape around the outside like a picture frame, one down the middle, and one on either side, and mount this in your book. Page six is complete. We are now on to the last two pages.